Welcome to this video on accessories for the Contax Film SLR lines. This video covers cable releases, filters and lens hoods for the Contax Yashica manual focus cameras and the N and 645 autofocus cameras. Also the cable release for the G-series rangefinders is covered. The initial Contax cable switch for the Contax RTS and Yashica FR series of cameras is shown here. It has a circular male pin connector on the end of the cable which I will show you now. That connector plugs into the camera body or motor drive on the RTS. The cable release component itself has a lock switch, shown here. When you press the button with the lock switch set, the cable release remains active until you press the button again. This is used for bulb exposures. This is the initial contact cable switch which is designed for use with the Contax RTS and Yashica FR series camera bodies. The cable switch S is used on Contax Yashica mount SLR cameras later than the Contax RTS and Yashica FR series that are equipped with an electromagnetic cable release socket. This has a different connector to the initial cable switch. It has a circular connector with a screw thread that screws into the cable release socket on the camera or on the motor drive. The operation of the cable release component remains the same as on the initial cable switch including the use of the lock switch. A connector cord R6SJ also shown here was supplied with these cable releases for use with the earlier Contax RTS and Yashica FR series camera bodies that use the older Contax cable switch. This cable switch is also compatible with the Contax G series rangefinders. The cable switch L replaced the cable switch S it has the same camera connector as the cable switch S and works with all the same cameras as the cable switch S. The connector cord R6SJ was not supplied with these cable releases and is an optional extra. It is required if you wish to use this cable release with the Contax RTS and Yashica FR series cameras. The cable release component is different and the lock switch is now the panel around the release button. This slides back showing a red mark when the cable switch is locked and slides forward to release the, the lock, as shown here. The cable switch LA, which was introduced for use with the Contax 645 and N series cameras, has a jack plug connector as a connector for the camera body. This plugs straight into the camera body. The cable switch LA is completely incompatible with earlier Contax SLRs. The cable switch component operates as the cable switch L does, though the lock panel is a different colour to the rest of the cable release component. Contax also produced a range of filters for their lenses. They came in a range of different sizes, the most common being 55mm and 67mm screw threads, which will screw directly onto most of the Contax Yashica mount range of lenses and also some of the later N-series lenses. They came in a variety of different types for black and white and colour usage. The, this is a set that I tend to use for black and white. They were both linear and circular polarisers, ND filters, colour correction filters, and the standard set of black and white colour filters that everyone uses. There are also P filters and the usual Skylight and UV filters. They're good quality multi-coated filters and perhaps the one reason for still using them is the fact that they colour coordinate to the lenses as the filter mount is the same colour as the lens barrel. Other than that there are many modern alternatives that you can use. The filter size for most lenses of the Contact 645 series is 72mm. There are two polarising filters in the filter range, shown here is the circular polarizer, labelled as a C polarizer, which is used for autofocus systems. The contacts manual describes it as compatible with cameras using half mirrors in the metering system. The linear polarising filter is just labelled as a polar. This is used with the manual focus lenses. One other feature of the filter line available for the Contax SLR lines was the incorporation of the softer range of soft focus filters into the line. These were available in three different types, soft R1, soft R2 and soft R3, which offer increasing levels of diffusion and are available in 55mm and 67mm through screw threads. The soft R2 was also apparently made in 86mm, but the others were not. These diffusers typically used for portrait shooting. 
The soft dark filters are a range of soft focus filters usually used to reduce the appearance of lines in portraits. Uh, this is a soft dark 3. They have a range of micro lenses coated on the front of the filter, which I'll try and show you by see if I can reflect the light off the filter. These filters work both on the manual focus and autofocus context SLR systems. In addition to these screwing filters, there is a gelatin filter holder that allows you to slide in gelatin filters in front of the lens. This is to allow you to use older fashioned gelatin filters. It is shown here. The filter holder frame is not fully inserted home so that it can be seen. Contacts also did a series of soft lens shades for their lenses, some of which are fitted with a screw thread for the lens and some of which were push on. The screw thread ones tended to be earlier and the push on ones tended to be later. This is the 50mm f1.4 with the screw on rubber lens shade. The lens shade on the right is the push on one for the same lens. There were a range of soft lens hoods for different types of lenses. Some supported multiple lenses and there were some that were specific to particular lenses. The 28 to 70 mm zoom had a specific soft lens shade which was its only option. In addition to the soft lens shades there was a range of metal lens hoods. These went from the W1 which was the widest and then the lens hoods 1 through 5. One was wide angle and 5 was the telephoto. And as the number increased, the focal length of the lens that it was supposed to be put on increased. The lens hoods came with separate adapter rings. The most common of these were the 55mm and 67mm to match the commonly used filter thread sizes on the contacts lenses. And you would mount the appropriate lens hood with the appropriate adapter ring on the front of the lens. These were all circular metal lens hoods and it is basically a lens hood system made up of components that you mix and match for lenses as appropriate. Now shown here is the Type 4 lens hood and the 55mm and 67mm adapter rings. With the 55mm ring on, this would be used on the 50mm standard lenses and it was used on the 85mm f1.4 with the 67mm ring. You just screw the adapter onto the back of the lens hood. This is now ready to be mounted on the lens. The appropriate lens and adapter combination is then screwed onto the front of the lens. The lens hood adapter combinations are designed to work with up to one filter on the front of the lens except for some of the wide angle lenses which require that no filter is attached. In addition to the soft lens shades and the system of metal lens hoods, some of the contacts lenses had a built in lens hood such as the 135mm f2.8 shown here. These built in lens hoods usually just um, slid out on the lens. The later range of SLRs, the N-series and the Contact 645, used bayonet mounted lens hoods which tended to be specific for each lens. This is a Vario Sonar 28mm to 80mm zoom, which has a petal shaped lens hood which is fitted with a bayonet mount and is reversible in the way that most modern lens hoods are. Rotate it. Invert it. Unlock it. It is a fairly standard type of modern lens hood. This is another end series zoom, the 70 to 200 mm Vario Sonar. This has a circular lens hood, but it is still bayonet mounted and works in the same way as the one for the 28 to 80 mm zoom. It is normally stored on the lens reversed. 
This is the lens for the Contact 645. It is a Distagon 55mm f3.5. This also has a reversible petal type lens hood that is bayonet mounted. Sometimes a lens hood can be used on more than one lens. This is another Contact 645 lens. This is the 140mm f2.8 Sonar. This has a circular lens hood, but once again, bayonet mounted like all of the Contact 645 lens hoods. It varies from lens to lens as to whether you get a circular or petal type lens hood. They all work the same way then. That brings us to the end of this video.